Ladies and gentlemen, we are very happy indeed to have such a wonderful crowd here at Petersburg. Thank the Hopewell High School Band. <clears throat> we have some distinguished visitors that have been with us since Richmond are leaving us now. <clears throat> Mrs. Julian Slate of Petersburg, Mr. Dooley of Petersburg, Mrs. Edith Collier, Mr. Joseph Owens, Mr. Fred Shepard, Mr. Jack Armstrong, Mrs. Hugh McIntosh, Mrs. Ruth Washington, Mrs. Washington, Mrs. Harry Booz, Mrs. George Field, Jr., Mrs. James Harrison, Mrs. Saul Goodman, Mrs. and Mrs. Franklin Warner, Mrs. Fred Swearinger, Jr., I'm Luther Hodges, a Democrat from North Carolina. <coughs> I want to present your distinguished mayor, Mayor Andrews. I'd like to present the mayor of Hopewell, Mr. Honorable Harold Butterworth and his wife. Harold Butterworth is right. Andrews is not coming up. Right. Mrs. Edith Collier, I'd like to thank her for what she's done. I'd like to thank Ms. Edith Collier for arranging this get-together, for Petersburg and Mrs. Harry Booz for the uh, participation of Hopewell. Is Mr. White here? Yes. Mr. White. Mr. William Earl White. <laughs> Mr. Steele, Mr. R. F. Burke Steele. <laughs> Mr. Archie Woods. They are local Democrats that all of you know. I would like to have a step here to the podium, Lieutenant Governor and Mrs. Mills Godwin, Governor and Mrs. Albertus Harrison, and have your distinguished governor to say a few words to you. Mr. Secretary, my friend Luther Hodges introduces himself by saying that he is a North Carolinian, keen, North Carolinian and a Democrat I would introduce myself by saying I'm a 4th District and a Southside Virginia Democrat. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I think we can agree that heaven and earth has conspired to give us this day. I'm delighted to be in Petersburg and Southside Virginia in the 4th District and to join you in welcoming to Virginia a very gracious, a very lovely, a very charming person. We are delighted to have Linda Bird. We are delighted to have Mrs. Johnson with us. And I know that you will give her the welcome which is so typical of the warmth, the cordiality, the hospitality that is Virginia's and is Petersburg. It's good to be with you. Thank you very much, Governor Harrison. Appreciate very much your being with us. Governor Harrison made a wonderful speech up at Richmond to us, and we are very happy to have him on here now. I want to present Mr. Herbert Talbot, who's the campaign chairman for the Johnson Bird campaign. Hello! Glad to see ya! Happy faces is what we like to look at. We've had a wonderful time in Richmond. The people have treated us like kings and queens on this train. They're all lovely. And I want to say, Petersburg has had many of first, along with Virginia. Virginia is first in many things, and we're most happy to welcome this beautiful and lovely First Lady to Petersburg, Mrs. Lyndon B. Johnson.
Thank you, Mr. Talbot. Thank you, Governor Harrison. They tell me that one of Petersburg city founders, Peter Jones, when he left on a long trip, advised his sons not to do anything until he got back. He never returned. <laughs> but his descendants must not have heeded his advice because Petersburg is obviously a can-do city. Look at this crowd they've gotten out. <laughs> And besides, if you weren't going places, you wouldn't have the biggest trunk factory in the world. <laughs> I can understand why Petersburg is proud sometimes to look backward at its heroic history. I wish the train were going to stop long enough for me to look at some of that history. That's the trouble with whistle stopping. That and not getting to visit with every last one of you, which I'd like to do. <laughs> I'd like to visit the expanded Petersburg National Battlefield and the crater. I'd like to see the streets where those jaunty volunteers of 1812 turned out in smart dress uniform to honor President Madison and won for Petersburg the title of the Cockade City of the Union. I think I see some cockades over there and I thank that band. <laughs> I like to think about the accomplishments of more recent history. I know that Petersburg is one of Virginia's big tobacco and peanut markets and that great improvements in farm income and farm family living have come within our lifetime. I've been told about all the industries that have come here. But now, as a wife, I want to talk to you about my husband who is seeking the office of presidency from you, the people that he works for. To this Democratic candidate and his wife, the South is a respected and valued and beloved part of the country and one that has always been home to me. The experience my husband offers for this awesome job of the presidency is 12 years in the House of Representatives, 12 years in the Senate, three as Vice President, and 10 arduous, demanding months as your President. I believe it can be said of those months that he has brought to this country stability and progress, and that he has lifted our faces to the expanding horizons of the free world. It's a record that I am proud of, I believe you approve of, and I hope you want to continue. I can't tell you how much I thank all of you for coming out. It, it's getting this day off to a marvelous start. I could just tell by the tone of the voice that, that Mr. Talbot had when he walked out here that everything was going to be fine. Thank you. just tell you uh, one more nice thing about whistle stopping you come across old friends from uh, years of the past and here I'm meeting uh, Esther Mae Tarver's sister somebody that I knew uh, for ages and ages Martha I'm so glad to see you, you <laughs> and your lovely daughter she's just as pretty I have a lovely one too it's my privilege to be I have been asked to present this to you I guess I was lucky because I was a Texan. I got, the, I got the opportunity and a loyal Democrat for many years. This is from the hopeful Democrats, and we hope you'll use it in the White House for the next eight years. <laughs> I, I thank you, and I thank all of the hopeful Democrats, and I thank you for that sign out there. And now I want you to know Linda Bird, our daughter. I want to thank all you young people for coming out, particularly the band and all these young people I see around here, because I feel that I represent you and you represent me, being a young person. 
But we have our place in the sun too, not just now and in the future, both times, because half the people in the world now are under 25. In 15 years, half the people in the United States will be under 25. So we have our place and our work to do now. So I hope I can enlist your aid, this volunteer generation, my generation, now till November and after November will need you just as much. Thank you all for coming. We're so glad to have that wonderful uh, Hopewell High School band. We're going to ask you in a few moments to play a piece for us. <coughs> right now we're going to have a presentation made by Mrs. Roy Creasy of Crepe Myrtlebush uh, to the First Lady of the Land. Miss Creasy. Ms. Johnson, the women of Petersburg are adding another laurel to their fair city by making it known as the Crepe Myrtle City. And this tiny shrub is symbolic of the love that we have in our hearts for you, Preston Johnson, and your lovely family. And when you see the lovely blooms, the deep red of which you love, it signifies the warmth in our hearts that we have for you. Miss Creasy, thank you so much. And please thank all the ladies for me. And I'm gonna t uh, when this bush gets to the ranch, I'm going to put it out and it will, uh, it, I have other crepe myrtle bushes there that uh, I have loved and enjoyed for years. And this will be a happy reminder of my stop here in Petersburg today. Thank you, Miss Creasy. And Miss Petersburg has a presentation. Miss Petersburg. As Miss Petersburg, it's my honor to present Lady Bird with these roses on behalf of my city. Let's have one selection by that band, then we have a little something after that. May I uh, want to thank the Hope of Band. I want to <coughs> I want to take these two minutes before we finish changing our engine here to take us on down uh, further into Virginia and into North Carolina. South Carolina, Georgia, Florida, and on into Louisiana, where we will close up uh, the train trip as of Friday night. <coughs> I just uh, can't resist the temptation of seeing this many people here, of saying a few words, as a man born in Virginia, and now living in North Carolina, and a Democrat all the way through, top to bottom, beginning to end. <coughs> I hope you don't mind a little personal reference. I was born on a tenant tobacco farm in Pennsylvania County, Virginia, about 15 miles out of Danville toward Martinsville. And when tobacco got down to five cents a pound, 
and my father with eight children got two and a half cents of the five cent, we decided, he decided, I was a year old, he decided that we would go across the border into North Carolina and work in the cotton mill. So six of us, boys and girls, went to work in the cotton mill as quick as we could get as much as 12 years of age in order to try to make a living. I have watched your state, my native state of Virginia, and I've watched my good state of North Carolina as it has come up through these years. I want to testify as a former son of a tenant farmer, a former textile worker, and a former governor of North Carolina, and now with the great privilege and honor of being in the cabinet of Lyndon Johnson, President Lyndon Johnson, that I think that what the Democratic Party has done for us through the years, what it has done particularly the last three and two-third years, and what it promises for the future, I can with all sincerity recommend it, and I hope very much that you think along those lines. Thank you.